Good evening. Welcome to Hasta La Soto, your half hour of local and regional news, features, weather, and other information. I'm Mike Clifford. On November 2nd, Adams State University released a statement saying it is unfortunate that a disgruntled, unsuccessful job applicant is misrepresenting information about Adams State University relating to his persona non grata status. It goes on to say that such status is issued only for safety purposes purposes, and in conjunction with the recommendation of the state attorney general's office. And uh, they are talking about Danny Ladani, a former uh, teacher at the school. Danny Ladani was issued persona non grata status because faculty, staff, and the former president have expressed concerns about his threatening behavior. Again, that's according to that statement from Adams State University. And the statement goes on to say the issue is not Ladani's academic freedom, but that the issues with Ladani have been ongoing and stem from him not receiving a tenured faculty appointment. In an interview with KRZA, although he does spend much time on uh, systemic issues at Adams State and criticism of uh, those issues. Ladani also talks about problems he has with the way the decision not to hire him was handled. Ladani says being banned from the Adams State campus is retaliation for his effort to raise concerns that have not been addressed and publish a website called watchingadams.org, which says it was created out of a recognition that critical and sustained local news coverage of the university did not previously exist and that the university equity, transparent governance, and institutional mission were suffering as a result. The Adams State Board of Trustees, in a statement sent to school staff and faculty on Monday, says the action was based on safety concerns and disruptive behavior. But according to the Valley Courier, Adams State President Dr. Beverly McClure says that the persona non grata status is based on a pattern of behavior that includes what she calls harassment on the blogs he has and the media he's putting out, where he's trying to put out information against McClure and the former president, but more particularly the institution. And So could this all be an overreaction to a lost job by a former employee? Could it all be an overreaction to permissible inquiries into the operation of a public state-supported institution? Neither or are both actions understandable and fitting. Although Adams State Police Chief Paul Grahowski did send a detailed email to the campus community in which he said it is his duty to balance the free speech and individual rights against the public safety of the many, that's a quote, the Adams State Office of the President has denied requests for an interview on this subject. Ladani, however, gave KRZA uh, an interview, and here's the first part of that. Our guest today is Danny Ladani, who uh, had been an um, adjunct professor at Adams State University up through the end of uh, last spring. Is that correct? Yeah, so I served as an adjunct instructor for three years at Adams State beginning in 2011. And for the 2014-2015 academic year, I was a full-time visiting assistant professor. All right. And um, now uh, you have been declared persona non grata on campus, right? Well, that is a proposed policy that, as I understand, it has not yet passed, but that the uh, it appears to me that that policy is being passed so that I would be named a persona non grata, and I currently have been banned from the university uh, for an indefinite period of time. Okay. And um, so from what the... Um, Uh, people with the university say uh, is that um, there have been uh, uh, messages or uh, communications of some kind that have been uh, been uh, thought of as threatening and I'm wondering uh, uh, if you think uh, if you can say that there's really nothing that you've uh, said or done over uh, the time in this process that uh, could be thought of as threatening reasonably Yeah, the word threatening is really not one that I would use to characterize any of my communications. Uh, People who've known me for a long time recognize that I am uh, a passionate and I am a 
an ambitious person, but that I very much try in all of my interactions with people to be civil, courteous, and respectful. But I recognize that um, in my communications with the university over the last six months, I have been persistent and I have been assertive about concerns that I have raised. Um, but I think any reasonable review of my correspondence would not conclude that it has been threatening in nature. Okay, so you're saying that the people who have uh, done this are not reasonable? I don't believe that uh, a neutral party would find it to be threatening. I think that it is possible that those in the administration who have reviewed this correspondence may feel discomfort from the fact that I'm not going away and from the fact that I'm insistent upon due process and in having my concerns heard, which to my observation is not something that they're used to experiencing with many of their other employees. And so can you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what some of these concerns are that you have and what uh, was the process that you went through to bring those up? Sure. I mean, I was living in Washington, D.C., having completed grad school. I have a master's in fine arts, which is a terminal degree in my field. And I was invited by the department chair of English Theater Communication to move back to the San Luis Valley and start a video production program in 2011. And I was very excited to do so. I've always um, enjoyed my time back in the San Luis Valley. I am kind of a, a native of the valley, so uh, it was an easy decision to make. And I guess over I'd like to talk more about what has happened after uh, your employment ended or the process of it ending. Sure. Um, and it was during that time that I understood that there would be a full-time position that could become available. And so for two years, in 2013-14 and in 2014-15, I applied for a full-time position. The only reason that context might be important is um, if someone wonders, well, why is Danny so determined here? It's largely because I created this video production program um, from scratch and uh, really was of the belief that if I did a good job, I would be seriously considered for the full-time position when it um, became available. Um, but I was a semi-finalist the first year, and uh, I was not a finalist. And the second year, I was not even a semi-finalist in the searches for this position. And so I began to become more concerned that perhaps my application wasn't fully considered, but I was perhaps naive in uh, trusting the process that Adam State had in place to be able to review concerns of this nature. Um, but a preliminary investigation concluded that there was no unlawful discrimination that took place in this hiring process, and I accept that finding. However, um, upon review of my own application materials, I discovered that there were a number of procedural, technical, and factual errors with the search process, and I've tried to been bringing that to the university's attention to the president's office and to the board of trustees since April and May of 2015. All right. And uh, how have you gone about doing that? Well, so, you know, I, I started with all of the prescribed channels. I was meeting with the Office of Equal Opportunity. I outlined my concerns. Um, upon review of my score sheets, the director of the OEO agreed that there were flaws with the search. He agreed that there were problems with it, and he encouraged me to be persistent. He said, you know, maybe you could just present the university with some alternative or say, you know, I have a lot of skills here. Maybe we can find a way to make this work. According to the Valley Courier, Joel Corngut, who was director of the Office of Equal Opportunity at the time, um, and uh, worked with Danny or, or uh, was a part of the process uh, that Danny is just talking about. Um, he does say that the hiring process was flawed, but the characterization that his views uh, that there were multiple problems and flaws with the decision, uh, that's too strong. And he also says, um, according to the courier, that he meant that Ladani should be persistent by doing a good job to prove his worth to the university, not to be persistent with appeals of the decision. And we don't have other sources to confirm uh, promises that Ladani says uh, were made to him or um, the uh, process of being offered the job or any of that uh, information. That's all uh, according to Ladani. I've never seen this as some kind of a zero-sum game. Um, I believe that the 
uh, university made a good choice in the candidate that they hired, and I wish him every success. Um, but I also know that there is still a great capacity that I could continue to fill at the university, uh, both in teaching and in media production for the university itself. And so in May of 2015, I offered kind of a compromise, which is, why don't we take my halftime video work and add a halftime teaching load and just make a new full-time position based on those assets? Um, and I really received uh, no um, positive response. I was told that, uh, that while my presentation was appreciated for its respectful and positive tone, um, I was not going to be... Uh, considered for any new full-time position of that nature. So then I reiterated in June uh, that I had concerns about the hiring process that still had not been addressed and that uh, perhaps we could look at a way to solve this problem together. Um, but I notified them that if we weren't able to do that, I still intended to review my concerns, which I didn't believe had been fully considered. And so that went in through the summer. I kind of took a step back because I recognized we had a new president and a lot of administrative change. And my plan really for this next year was just to do the halftime video production work and kind of take a step back and see how things shook out uh, with the university. But upon my return, I did a couple of video shoots in July and thought, okay, things are going to be rolling forward. I'll just see how things work out. But then in August, I was told that... Uh, the university could no longer hire me, um, so the video work that I thought I would be doing was no longer available at all, and within a week of that, my email address was shut down, my account was shut down, and at each step, I'm trying to like gather more information about why is this happening, isn't there something we can do about this. I tried to meet with the new director of the Office of Equal Opportunity and was told on uh, no uncertain terms that um, I could not meet with this person and that I was um, basically considered a non-employee and I no longer had standing. And there are a variety of problems with those assertions, but I found that I was just being stonewalled at every turn in my efforts to try and work out some solution or even oh. to retain what I thought I had. Yeah, and I mean, when you say solution, um, you know, a, another way of looking at this might be that um, you had a proposal that you made and it was rejected and, um, you know, the rest of it is just a, a reaction to that. I mean, I think people have proposals rejected by the college, the university, uh, regularly, and they probably have a few that are accepted as well. But, um, you know, what what is the uh, goal behind that? Sure. Well, it would be one thing if the halftime teaching position I proposed was rejected, uh, which it was, um, but it was quite another that after having been repeatedly promised that uh, the video production budget that I had been working off of for four years was going to be doubled this next year, and that that essentially was going to be the halftime position I would continue to serve, that the other half of what was already on the table was taken away. And I began to believe that, that it was taken away because I had proposed this other offer, because I had made clear that I still had concerns. So the behavior stopped being kind of a back and forth negotiation, and it started to feel more and more retaliatory, that because I had raised this concern, now all of these other steps that wouldn't have been taken before were now being taken against me. And what, uh, I mean, other than the way it feels, what kind of evidence do you have for that, that it's retaliatory? Well, certainly the Office of Equal Opportunity um, doesn't have to only meet with current students or employees. That position historically has included meeting with prospective students, with job applicants who feel that they weren't treated fairly, with community members. And so for the OEO to take the position that they will not meet with me, even to sit down and dis discuss what it is that I have concerns about, um, that, that was a red flag in and of itself. The fact that I articulated that the email account that I was using was still being used for ongoing service I was performing at the university, such as the Southern Colorado Film Festival, um, and that it was still taken away, and that I was told that because I was not an employee, I was not entitled to an account. And I tried to explain several times that I was still using this account to perform these duties. 
Um, and then talking to peers of mine who maintained an email address for six months, a year or longer after their employment ended, it became clear that they were making a much more directed effort to try and get rid of me. Okay. I mean, some would say that's not necessarily clear. That might just be coincidence. Maybe they're uh, enforcing that more now. Um, it could be one big misunderstanding. Um, but the fact that I, again, went to the Board of Trustees meeting in October and suggested that we um, use a community mediation service to sit down and talk about what's going on, and they refuse to do so, tells me that at every point that I've tried to initiate a dialogue or conversation, I've been told that that's not happening, that that's, well, it's possible, but they're choosing not to. Okay. Um, and so, uh, you know, the other uh, viewpoint that some folks, and I guess it's kind of the same thing I was saying before, but that, um, again, this is uh, more about, uh, you know, I, they have actually used the term disgruntled uh, employee uh, hitting back or, uh, you know, retaliating himself, I guess, would be uh you know, one way of looking at it with the tools at your disposal. Sure. Um, I'm not completely resistant to the term disgruntled. I think uh, after what I've been through over the past 18 months, um, I think some degree of disgruntlement is, um, if not inevitable, it's certainly understandable. I have tried to, you know, comport myself in a respectful manner, but um, certainly my efforts to try and figure out in this small town we all live in how we can make this work and being treated as though I really need to hit the road, um, that's, uh, that's disappointing because Adam State is a, is a, a small university. It really um, values and I think tries to maintain uh, strong relations with its community. And so um, you would think that in a community this size, there would be more opportunity to find win-win solutions uh, than I've currently experienced. Yeah. I mean, I think, again, that's something, uh, you know, uh, I think a lot of us wish there were win-win situations happening more often, but that uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that we have a, a right for that to happen. Sure. Um, I mean, you could even take the same decisions that have been made and ask yourself, are there ways to have made those same decisions that might be more community-minded, for example? So I understand, as much as anyone in the world of budget cuts and financial uh, strain, that sometimes we can't do everything that we'd like and we can't hire everyone that we would like. But for someone who has been producing media for the university for four years and has received um, many um, compliments and notes of appreciation for that work, is the right way to go about letting that person go simply to tell their superior that they cannot hire me anymore without so much as kind of meeting with me or making clear that this might be a temporary situation, but in the future things would work out def differently. Um, you know, the, the sort of ongoing blacklisting of an individual uh, is, is a very different tack to take than simply saying, hey, things right now are a little bit tough, but um, let's stay in touch and see if we can work something out. Um, I think many people who have felt frustrated and left Adam State or are still at Adam State and struggling would say that it's only partially related to the actual uh, practice and policy, and it's much more related to the manner in which communication happens and uh, the value or lack of value that many people feel uh, for the hard work that they're doing every day. So you would say that um, the... Uh, uh the way they handled uh, the decision not to rehire you is really the the main problem here? Yeah, I would say that it would have been totally possible to find ways to make clear that my service was valued and that in the future uh, there may remain opportunities to continue working together. Um, but I believe that simply by virtue of raising concerns that haven't been addressed, the university to some degree feels uh, uncomfortable, perhaps even threatened by the fact that I'm saying, wait, I've identified these problems in your process. Can we find a way to address them? Um, and the university has kind of unequivocally said no. And when I said, well, then how are we going to work this out? Uh, it seems that the solution is to ban me from campus and for reasons that um, many people don't find very convincing. 
Danny Ladani, a former professor at Adams State University, or uh, instructor at least, um, talking about the situation and the process in which uh, he was not rehired. And uh, he has been uh, issued apparently uh, either a um, trespass, uh, trespass notice, I believe, uh, telling him that he uh, is no longer uh, welcome on campus or uh, persona non grata, actually. Um, the university says uh, such status is issued only for safety purses, purposes, um, that it was issued because faculty, staff, and the former president have expressed concerns about his threatening uh, behavior. Uh, they say, uh, again, that uh, the action was based on safety concerns and disruptive behavior, and um, that uh, what began as an unsuccessful application for a faculty position has been distorted, that his freedom of speech is in no way threatened. Now, um, Ladani says that, uh, you just heard him, that uh, in fact the uh, process and the way it was handled of his uh, the decision not to rehire him is uh, a big problem, uh, but he says that the um, uh, persona non grata status is actually being uh, issued because of um, uh, criticisms and uh, attention he's been bringing to certain uh, policies at Adams State, uh, especially through uh, a website he started called uh, Watching uh, Adams dot uh, org, I believe, and. Um, the uh, president of the university actually also says that um, it is uh, partially because of this pattern of behavior based on uh, blogs he has and the media he's putting out where he's trying to put out information against McClure and the former president, but more particularly the institution that is, uh, in fact, a part of the decision. And, uh, well, we'll leave that up to you uh, to decide if uh, either one is right or they're both wrong.